Hi everybody, and welcome to Man vs. Knitting. This is the very first episode. My name is Charles Clark, and I wanted to invite you to subscribe if you so choose. Uh, just hit the button down below, and then hit the notification bell if you'd like to be notified of future episodes. I'd really appreciate that. And let's get started. So I've created a website uh, for this channel to support it called manversusknitting.com. You can go there. I've also put a link down below. There's also another way to get the conversation started, and that is through the Man vs. Knitting Facebook group, uh, also linked below in the show notes. <clears throat> the website is good and unique in that um, I can put information there that I can supplement to here, um, more details, and also links to other things um, as they get shown or shared with me. The... Uh, website has a contact form that you can put questions to and if I think that question applies to everybody then I will put the question and the answer in the FAQ section um, which I've already done to a few questions that have come in uh, from the intro video so thank you for that um, that's going to be a great resource I think for everybody so uh, be sure to check that out all right so the first section <coughs> is history and or his story and uh, I have this section there to focus on the men in the industry uh, these are men who uh, are published or produce things that uh, help us as knitters um, or myself at, at any rate uh, and the first person that I wanted to focus on for the very first episode is a good friend of mine Kyle Kenicky. he is in Seattle Washington and a couple of years ago, he produced a book, uh, just seems like yesterday, um, called The Urban Knit Collection. And this book uh, is great in that a lot of books have, a lot of these books, have uh, patterns in them that apply to the female form. Uh, and they might have one or two unisex, uh, maybe one or two men's. Uh, designs in there, but the most of it is for females. And the great thing about his book was that over 75% of the uh, patterns are either unisex or for men. Uh, so there is a lot more diversity, I think, in uh, the things that he has. Here's an example of just some of the details that he has. It's just really great. Um, not only does he give you the pattern with lots of lots and lots of pictures, but there's charts as well, um, and then a how-to on the uh, things that he says to do in each pattern uh, are in the back. So there's just some wonderful, wonderful stuff um, in there. And so I wanted to have a conversation with him, bring uh, a little bit of Kyle to you. So at this point, uh, let's have a conversation with Mr. Kenicky. Hi, Kyle. Hey. Welcome to the Man vs. Knitting channel. Thanks. Good to be here. Well, I wanted to bring you to the viewers because you're a designer there in Seattle and you've been doing this for a while. But uh, my first question is, what led you to learn to knit and down the path of being a knitwear designer? Sure. So um, I learned to knit, I think, about 2003 or so in L.A. I was homesick, and my roommate at the time was knitting garter stitch striped scarves. And I told her it looked boring and tedious. So she challenged me to give it a shot, and so I did. She cast on and taught me how to knit, and the first thing that I ever knit was lace, believe it or not. But I think a lot of people hit lace um, because you drop stitches and then you join some together and you never end up with the same number. So it was a very complicated improv lace. Okay, cut out there. Uh, of course it did. But right, right at your lace. Okay, so. I, I cast on and knitted probably an entire skein of yarn and finally figured out what I was doing. And then I wanted to use my own needles and my own yarn so we went to a yarn shop and I found yarn that I liked and my own needles that I wanted to do, use and uh, started knitting and for about 
the first three years, I think it was all garter stitch, striped, just changing colors. Uh, I did blankets and shawls and ponchos and scarves and anything that was a rectangle, no shaping and only garter stitch. Um, then I moved to uh, very, very north Los Angeles and went started going to a yarn shop there. There was a girl there named Terry who introduced me to these things that are called patterns. Um, patterns have instructions in them. So if you uh, follow these instructions, you can get all kinds of stuff out of your using your yarn and your needles, like sweaters and hats and who knew. So <laughs> I started following patterns and almost immediately wanted to start modifying them. And then uh, being an artist and creative person, I wanted to make my own stuff. So I started modifying them, and one of the very first, uh, some of the very first stuff that I did of my own design was for publication. So I didn't just improv to begin with. I dove in heart first and started doing it for 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 patterns for sale. Well, that's a that's a really and you're right. A lot of beginner knitters don't know about patterns, and they learn just by going back and forth and uh, if you think about garter stitch you know it's one of the um, simpler stitches that looks complex uh, yeah. so that's probably one of the most exciting things of course i'm going to be teaching everyone just the stockinette stitch at first and so uh, we'll get them going with that muscle memory but that's later Perfect. in the show yeah. um, so the next question is what do you know now that you wish you had known when you first started knitting? Um, I know now that it's okay to rip things out. I think that's probably, I guess there's a two-part answer. One is it's okay to rip things out. Two would be there's another thing that people need to know about called gauge. And gauge is something that my students, a lot of people say, oh, I don't, I always get gauge. I always match gauge on a pattern, which in reality, that doesn't really mean anything. Gauge is just the number of stitches per row, inch per row or round that the designer got when they made the sample garment. And it's a guideline using that yarn and that needle. Mm -hmm. When they did it, this is how, what size needle they used to get the size. And it's important in garments, you know, sweaters or things that are fitted, less important when it's a shawl or, oh, or something that's just draped like a scarf. Um, but it is important uh, based on if you're trying to get a certain look, if you want to get the same kind of look that the designer did. So if you're changing out the yarn or you are trying to do something that's fitted, it's important to do a gauge swatch, which is just a smaller piece of knitting. And people say, well, I don't knit gauge swatches. And I challenge them. And the thing that I wish I realized is we we are always knitting a gauge swatch. The choice that you make is do you make a small piece to get an idea of how many stitches it is? Or do you make an entire sweater that doesn't fit that you end up ripping out or, you know, not liking because it's not fitting the way that you want it to be? So if we allow ourselves time, uh, we're more successful in the things that we do. And, you know, there really is a reason why all the patterns say this is the gauge. You know, here's some guidelines that, to how you will be successful in making this thing. Um, so, yeah. Unless you want to be like uh, the famous knitter Elizabeth Zimmerman, who would knit a sweater and then find somebody who fit it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's a funny story. So um, what is your favorite thing about knitting? Um, there's endless opportunity in knitting. Um, I think for a lot of us, a lot of people, knitting starts and stops with the yarn and the needle. But if you become connected to a community of some sort, like I started going to um, men's knitting retreats, which I'm sure you'll talk about, yes. um, going to my local yarn shops and hanging out there, um, going to knitting groups, and, you know, in San Francisco, I had a fantastic group of guys who I got to hang out with. And here in Seattle, don't get up there quite as much because I'm just outside of Seattle. Okay. But um, I do get the, um, getting to spend time with other people who have similar interests. 
of the sense of community and the friendships that are fostered by getting out in the public and being a part of that community is probably one of my favorite things about it. Yeah, mine as well. Um, that's why I, this is important to me to kind of bring you to everybody and to foster this sense of community because it really is because I don't think I've met a guy who knits that I didn't get along with. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It just hasn't yeah. happened yet. Yeah. Um, so here's a neat little question I know you've got a colorful answer for. Where <laughs> do you get your yarn? Uh, <laughs> well, I um, have the best job in the world. I get to work at a yarn shop. So I am general manager of Makers Mercantile. Um, hold, on, hold on one second. My cat. This is, this is Lily. Hey, Lily. She wants to hit, she wants to hit the tripod. Hey everyone! Um, so I work at a yarn shop called Makers Mercantile, um, just outside of Seattle. I'm one of the general managers there, and I manage the website and do all kinds of stuff there. So, of course, I have my stash here at, at home. I have a studio, which is a, a bedroom full of yarn and all of that. Yeah. Um, and then at work, I have an entire yarn shop or fiber arts shop full of yarn and spinning fibers and fabrics and felting supplies and all of that and a cafe which is great um behind the shop the shop itself is about six thousand square feet um behind the shop i have a warehouse that's my warehouse Mm -hmm. it's actually i don't know how big it is but it's probably like three or four thousand square feet of just um aisle and aisle and aisle after box of box and box of yarn just lots and lots of yarn that's where my office is and then about a mile away is my current company um Scassel, who does a lot of uh this distribution of adding needles and all of that and that warehouse is really big yeah. and i i can't even guess because my numbers would be totally wrong but it's huge it's really really big so um i've seen pictures it really is huge it's yeah, it's an amazing uh, experience. Not the largest warehouse I've been in, or like most overwhelming, but by far, you know, like all the yarn I could ever want and more is right there. Yeah, so, Scassell yeah. actually, and I said this in the intro um, edition, but they underwrote me as my scholarship for the Rocky Mountain Men's Knitting Retreat that I oh. did. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a great company to work for. Um, truly, as family, everyone wants everyone else to succeed, and uh, yeah, it's really really cool. So I'm lucky. I have a great job. Well, that's amazing. Yeah. So the other question, sort of bringing it back to community, why do you think knitting is a good hobby for guys? I think in the United States, um, there's a lot of like gender and sexuality stuff is all connected well, like the world of course but um, I think that a lot of people a lot of guys might see knitting and the fiber arts as effeminate and then that links to you know sexuality and off we go um, I think that might be why not as many men in western cultures might knit as much as women but i do think that there are a lot more guys who knit than um there are more guys who knit than we know about especially with the internet order supplies online make things at home you know you make them for yourselves your friends your family you know right knitting and crochet they're doing it they're doing it but they're they're at home they're not reaching out and joining that community yeah all right yeah that's a good answer um so What's on the horizon for you as a designer? Hmm. So I right now I'm finishing up or in the middle slash finishing up my first uh, mystery knit along, which has been a lot of fun. Hmm. Um, I am. What is on the horizon for me? I have a number of different designs that are in different stages of development. Um, but for the most part, it is right now for me, individual patterns, things published, uh, through my shop or um or through my own name but uh so anyway i wanted to thank you so much for taking the time to meet and yeah, talk of course. of course and uh and hopefully one day we'll get to actually meet in person and yeah, that would be nice maybe at a knitting retreat
Maybe, yeah. That would be fun. <laughs> that would be. All right, thanks again. Of course. All right, bye. See you bye. Okay. Wasn't that great? Wow. Uh, he's a really good designer and uh, a great personality, and I think it's going to be great uh, having you follow him. Uh, his website is www.kylewilliam.com, again, in the show notes below. Uh, and uh, be sure to check that out, and you can order Urban Knit Collection uh, almost anywhere, uh, but through his website, particularly, kylewilliam.com.